So the manual also says that if you need a higher shoulder on your flare, then you just position the tube higher up in the holder. Less you can go a little bit below, but it's generally recommended, I guess, that you're about flush. Um, the one that I did last night, I was just a tiny bit proud, and then I compared it to uh, a piece of tubing that I had flared by the local hydraulic shop, and it was just a, I think, a 300 thou skinnier than theirs. It was just a not not quite as wide but just a little bit under what theirs was so i'm just gonna set it about the same again just so it's slightly proud and let's see how that comes out that seems like it should work good so you just get it positioned where you want to and you slide this down it has some some marks on the on the uh, the flaring tool right here to locate the side and then that way it'll drop into its corresponding hole and be positioned correctly so so that looks good I just tighten this down Way, so we're just going to tighten this up now. Okay, we measured the length on here. Replicated on that side. Cut the end off, deburred it. So I think the length should be good on that. So make sure we put our tube nuts on. Appropriate direction. <clears throat> Put our ferrule on, again in the appropriate direction, double check everything, looks good, and the yoke of the what is it called? Is it an anvil? So this is the flaring bar and I guess the other part is just the flare tool doesn't really say precisely but this is the yoke so we'll make sure the yoke is positioned in between the two marks on the flaring bar <clears throat> tighten it down it looks good inside just have a uh, just a little bit proud start to flare it. Okay, we'll get you guys in here and try and get a shot of this so you can see the cone rotating around and it starts rolling the flare. Can you see it? Yeah. Can you see it? Mm-hmm. You can see the handle here start to separate, right here. Oh yeah.
There's the clutch. Now it just rolls around once. That makes it, it nice <clears throat> that it pops like that. Yeah. So, okay, there we have it. <clears throat> nice little tube assembly. Nice and compact compared to a hose. Of course, you can never get anything this small, so. That is gonna be right there. And then we'll have to tilt this off to the side a little bit, but that's okay. I think this is going to work good this way. If it turns out that it's too far down on the cylinder to get this wrapped in correctly, I could always, I suppose, 90 this and, and put a, a 90 here instead. We'll just see how this turns out. But I'm kind of aiming for something like that. Snug these up a little bit doesn't turn <clears throat> so those will go there and then our just a female JIC swivel on our hose assembly and we'll have one that comes in on the side like that just clear this other set of fittings. These will go to the valves right here. So we'll have a hose assembly there. And then our other hose assembly will be right here. So these will both go to the control valve. Like that. I guess. This should be pretty clean. Now I just need to figure this one out. I'm not really sure. I might maybe just do a kind of a 90 or something, or I don't know if I can come up and do a like a 45 or something. Hmm. Got to figure that one out, and then this will be complete. Okay, so I think my plan is going going to be to come off this fitting and come out 45 up and. 90 down here so be something kind of like that 90 down and then come into this fitting uh, but before I can do that I need to get this this fitting locked down because this uh, this is set now so if I if I make this assembly here and then I tighten this up all the way, it's going to throw off the tube length <coughs> and it probably won't fit properly. So I take this off and apply some sealant to this fitting and tighten it down. And uh, I'm just using some thread sealant, it's Vibratite, it's made for hydraulics, um, high temp. This is really good stuff. It's just like the Loctite 567. Um, highly recommend it for hydraulic stuff. We use it on ours. We don't have any leaks on any of these uh, regular pipe threads. That's generally where you see leaks. You don't really get them off of the JICs, but you do get them where they thread into sockets, it seems like. And we've used this stuff before and stopped problem leaks that we had. So get yourself some of this, save yourself a lot of grief. Um, PTFE also works, but this works better. And whatever you do, don't use uh, thread tape because that Teflon, if it gets into your hydraulic system, it can damage your pumps. So, so take this off. Make 
make sure our th threads are clean. pretty good so when you apply this you don't need to go all the way around the thread instructions just say to go three quarters of the way around the thread one pass and that's sufficient when you twist it in it'll spread the sealant all the way around so just to Thin film about three quarters of the way around. That's good. It probably squirts a little bit out the end, so guess a little more than we wanted, but that's all right. And I'll go ahead and get it started. Now this really doesn't matter if I the height that this one is set at, but we're just gonna tighten it up till it's snug. I wanna kinda resist the urge to over tighten this kind of stuff because it can deform the threads and I've actually cracked a valve body before trying to get a fitting into the location that I wanted to and really just came to down to going an extra turn too much. So that'll be good. We'll reassemble this and then we can start planning our other tube assembly. Just gonna snug that up a little bit. Same with this one. Tighten up the lock nut on this orb a little bit. See, it's pretty rigid, so it'll be a nice setup. Okay, so I was just looking at this. I think what I'm gonna try to do is use this piece of tube that I have. This is just left over from a different project. The bend was off or something, and so I didn't end up using it, but I did save it. And I think if I just come in here Pretty much straight off of that, 90 up, and then uh, bend this 45 into a 90. I think the height is going to be pretty close, and I can probably adjust it on this axis here, hopefully, and and make up the difference. So I'm going to put this back in my bender. I'm going to 90 this. Hey guys, so. I changed the configuration. I basically just flipped this valve over and now I have these ports where they're yeah, aligned uh, pretty much dead even straight. So I think that's my, my best bet. Uh, it doesn't really matter as far as that orientation because both of these ports just lead to the valve and the hose on there. So it's not a big deal which way this faces. And so I think my orientation is good now. It'll make it a lot simpler. There just wasn't room to, to fit a 45 in here or 290s. The uh, radiuses go out too far. So this is actually a lot easier and a lot cleaner. So I'm just going to, I guess I'll probably tighten this fitting up and pull this in 
a little bit and then I'll measure my distance here, cut my pipe and flare it. And that way if I come up a little bit short, I can always back this fitting out because with the O-ring boss, it's actually this jam nut that compresses this washer and the O-ring against the face of, of the port. So I'll be able to take up any slack right there that, that I need to on this pipe. So that's what I'll do. I'll get my first piece uh, flared and then I'll get a measurement and I'll cut it and flare the other end and we'll assemble it. Let's do it in a FTB. Probably, maybe I have to do it on the 45 here. And hopefully it didn't make it long. afraid oh dear still <laughs> maybe maybe not oh. oh maybe I'm right I guess it's okay huh must be if it's going in yeah bottoms out straight there it is well there it is there it is nice so that looks good so all I need to do is just adjust this a little bit at the end and just tighten this nut up, tighten that nut up. It looks good. There it is. Fabulous. <clears throat> yep, so there it is. Fits good. I'm very happy with that. Nice clean install. So all I really need to do is I've already put these into place with sealant, tightened them down. Um, these ones, of course, are just O-ring uh, boss fitting. And so this jam nut is what compresses the O-ring against the face of it. So those can just be tightened up last. And then I'll reassemble all this stuff. And this project will be ready to go. So my hose does hit this pipe here, so I'll probably get a little 45 just adapter right there, just to pull it away a little bit, something like that. And it's not rubbing up against here, chafing, this whole thing pivots, and so I don't want this grinding away on that hose right there and damaging or I should say grinding away on that tube and damaging the hose. So I think that I'd probably do that because it is just tied up against there to where it's hard to even get it started. So that'll be easy to fix. And thumbs up on this project.